Hello and welcome to the Post to Post podcast. We're we're here. The lights are on. Yes, we're the only thing that's here because there's um, nothing on the show. Yeah, for you people on YouTube, there's not much going on here. So, I think back in October, November, we're guessing, we decided to start work on the studio to yeah. fix the old shelves that fell off the walls. We brought in actual real like bookshelves, and we're gonna have all this stuff on them. But then COVID shut us down again, and this is literally the first time we've been down here. It's, Since we put up these shelves. Yeah, it's like eight or nine months ago. And we kind of forgot about them. Yeah, I literally forgot that I bought them. I and forgot that the studio basically is just in shambles right now. Yeah. But like, you know what? The show must go on. The show must go on. And this is what? Episode four of the season? <laughs> episode four. <laughs> we're into the playoffs and we're in episode four. It's just bad. Yeah. And it's also bad because it seems like with everyone staying at home now, everyone and their dog and their uncle and their monkey and their pet anything are doing their own podcast as well there's so many podcasts from so many people and a lot of them are people like more more qualified than us now which is just like hey you guys have your own professional thing why don't you just go do that and leave yeah the pod to us? I, I agree yeah so agree. anyways we're back um you guys have been seeing neil because neil's been pumping out videos I, I was on one of them so i guess you've seen me once yes uh, that was what last week yeah but before that it was it was it was a while yeah and yeah, I have a kid now. <laughs> yes. like that's congratulations. Quite a bit kid. different. Um, someone was on, on our Discord was actually saying something about how they were, they posted a picture and it was like a picture of all the different countries in Europe and saying on average how much sleep they get per night. And oh, okay, it was like averaging six to seven hours, and I'm like, sleep? What is sleep? Yeah, like I'd, that is not even a thing for me anymore. I don't have kids, and that is the main thing. If I ever have kids, is the one thing I'm worried about is that first like six months or whatever. Where you're just exhausted all the time. I'm not going to lie. I'm going to give the real talk. Because everyone's all like peaches and cream. Life's good. Okay. It's not all peaches and cream. All right. Now, I will say it is 150% worth it. You you will not regret it. But it's tough. Anyone who tells you it's not tough is full of crap. Or or they're rich and they have a nanny. I I can't say that I understand because I don't. But Like people will tell you that you will not sleep. And we took that in. Like I understand. Everyone's telling me I'm not going to sleep. But it's worse than you think it's going to be. Like, it really is. Like, it's like you you almost start getting angry because you're not getting enough sleep. Yeah. Like, the baby will be sitting there crying, and I just feel my blood boiling. Like, why am I getting mad at this baby? He's crying for a reason. Yeah. His stomach's upset. He's got gas. He's whatever. He can't poop. He's whatever. A, he's a Bruins fan. He's got, he's got real problems. He's a Bruins fan. Yeah. Especially after last night. <laughs> it's not his fault. But I'm just like, you got to stop crying. And I don't do that, obviously. Yeah, yeah but, obviously. Yeah. But it's just like, ugh. Life was so much easier before... This screaming little baby that's like this big exactly. was in my life. There's a lot of other things that uh, seem extremely insignificant now. Yes. That there's a fresh human in your household. Yeah. But it's 150% worth it. No regrets. No regrets. No. Like, it changes you for sure. Mm. But we, we had a plan to actually reveal <laughs> yeah. the baby. Yes, we did. But COVID. So, if you remember the last, I think the last video I posted on YouTube, I don't know if it actually went on to the podcast audio or not, but I basically gave the update saying of why we were going on pause mm-hmm. because my wife is pregnant and we planned on having a baby within a couple weeks. That's the last time you guys have officially heard of me on this channel. Um, so what I was thinking was, you know, we'll be back in like three weeks after the baby's born and we're going to say we're back. And then this baby's going to rise up here from the middle of the table and just be like, whoa, what's that? I was going to have my wife just so I called him <laughs> up. But then like. Dad life kicked in. I'm like, okay, there is no way. Yeah. Like Neil was way more right than he's. He said probably April or May. And I was like, oh, it's not going to be that long. He was totally right. Because here we are like halfway through May. And I scrambled just to get these <laughs> notes done. Yeah, this is this this was um, um, not really a last minute decision, but kind of in a way. We know the playoffs are starting. We wanted to start this up back for a while. The time is basically right. Yeah. We could have waited a little bit longer, yeah. to be honest. Obviously, we could have been more prepared. Shelves. Obviously, yeah. the shelves, the notes. We don't even know if the audio is going to work. Yeah, like we haven't even tested the audio because our cable is not working into the mixer. So a lot of the stuff we had here, we were leaving down in the studio. But because we weren't doing the podcast, Neil took it all back yes. to his place, which is and he's using the camera we're using now to record his top down. Yes, that's unboxings. actually my jersey camera. I do all my close up footage of the jerseys and the top down yeah. stuff with that camera that you guys are watching on right so now. So we had to reset everything up. We hope it's in focus. It is on autofocus. <laughs> that is the one thing I'm confident that it is working correctly. So... We're probably going to be a little bit rusty. You're probably not as rusty because you're talking to the camera every day. Yeah, I haven't I talked to the camera in like half a year. See, this is like. this is a treat to me because I I can actually have a conversation with yeah. another another face, another person, another voice 
rather than just me just spitting off stuff. There's definitely advantages myself. to having a sidekick. I would rather have a conversation with about you know hockey with someone versus myself any day of the week. Yeah, any day of the week. I, I don't like, like doing it by myself. Yeah, I wouldn't do this if it was by myself. Yeah, I it's, don't even know why I do this to begin with. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna get going here, but just uh, expect a little rust. Yeah, expect a little bit of maybe unpreparedness. A little bit of fumbles with the words that come out of my mouth because that usually happens on a regular basis not to mention when i haven't done this for a while but a lot of people in the comments were saying miss the pod hope it yes. goes back soon and i can't remember who it was i actually replied to someone earlier this week and said we're back next week and i was Heck like okay yeah. i can't put this off i told that guy we're coming back we gotta do it there you go i so i guess the plan is i guess we didn't discuss this but continue every sunday we're gonna try to continue every sunday over. yep okay. and another thing that kind of sucked about getting prepared for this episode but this is an awesome episode talking about how unprepared we are. <laughs> but um, yesterday was like 26 degrees here. In fact, mm. and it was awesome. First really nice day we've had. So we took our little guy to the lake with mom and dad and my sister and her little girl. And it was just planned on being a supper thing, come back. And then we ended up staying and watching the game there. So we got back at like, I don't know, 12 o'clock at night. And I was like, I don't have my notes ready. So then I had to scramble to get them done. I would say this morning, but it's more of this afternoon because I didn't wake up until this <laughs> afternoon because the baby was out last night. So anyways. It is all good. You, it's all good. You watched more of the game than I did. So. I watched all of the game. Yeah. And I wasn't too impressed with what I saw. Te and, and really, we'll get into this, but I wasn't impressed with Boston, but I kind of wasn't impressed with Washington either. I really expected more from both teams. I just expected a lot more from Boston. From what I saw, the game was a bit all over the place during certain sections of it. So. If, if you would have looked at that game and told me that was like a preseason game, I would have believed you because it was just very unclean, like turnovers, bad passes, like... Boston's physicality, like, we'll get into this, non-existent. Mm. But anyways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so. Oh, yeah, I want to plug Discord real quick, if you don't mind. You do it. You plug we, it. We plug it every now and then, but. Um, so we have a prediction system on Discord. If, you, if you're not on our Discord, you don't know where Discord is, you should because we talk about it enough now. It's basically a big kind of chat server. There's a whole bunch of people on there. There's a bunch of other servers. You, you can join other ones, not just ours. Um, so go to discord.posttopostshow.com. That will give you the link that takes you right there. You can either, you don't even have to install anything if you don't want to. You can just open a browser. And we have the games for the playoffs and the regular season, which is ridiculous. Um, you can talk to people while the games are going on and all that jazz. Um, There's a mail day channel where you can post, you know, if you buy a jersey or you buy some kind of merch, yeah. you can post your photos of what you got in the mail. You can share your fat loots. You can buy and sell jerseys on there. We have a whole selling channel set up, uh, off topic, all kinds of stuff on Discord and a lot of people in there have become like legitimate friends. Yep. So, if, oh, there's names in there we know now. Like, yeah. If you guys want to come make some friends, yep. Talk some hockey. I'd love it if you could join the Discord. Yep. Well, our, our, we have a prediction system running and it's kind of wonky this year. I'm probably going to make a separate video of this and post this on Discord at some point to talk about it. But this is the first year ever that the regular season is still going on while the playoffs are going on, which yeah. screws the bot up. The bot was not meant to handle two different types of games. So, Normally, when the regular season ends, that's what our contest is. Generally, we award the winner of the regular season. Like, you know, for the last five months, this person has predicted the yeah. best. They win, and then we just do the playoffs for fun. Because the playoffs are on right now, while the regular season's still going on, we have to hold off on the playoff predictions for now. So we're just, all the games that are on their playoff games, we're just invalidating them. And then just the regular three games that are left, those are the ones that are going to count. And I, I want to get into that, too, because yeah. I just think it's ridiculous. So technically, if you're listening and you're not on Discord, and you want to be part of the prediction system, by the way, winner of the prediction in the in the playoffs, bragging rights, and the title, I think, right? Yeah. Or, it's down to a hot race right now for the regular season. There's yes. two people that are within one point of each other. One of them is going to win a jersey. Yes. Come uh, with a meal. First time we've ever given yeah. away a legit prize. So I think they're both pretty nervous. They're intense games that could go any way, so <laughs> they're hard to predict. This, I guess it would be stressful in a way, but and there's, they're, there's and no they second place And they prize. both caught on about how, how to... How to you see, I told you I was going to do that, but how to hide their predictions. So they're clicking it and clicking it off so that neither one of them knows who votes. So yes. it's 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 a head to head for three more games. It's a chess match. It's interesting. So anyways, come uh, on, Discord. One thing you didn't mention is that we're going back to the full length. Uh, yes. Versions of this podcast on YouTube. We really tried to experiment and we thought the best way to grow the channel was to do highlight videos or individual videos and split them up and then have the full length audio version still available on iTunes or Google, whatever. And technically that was correct. Technically that was correct. Those, it started those, to work well. Those killed it. 
Like, yeah, they really, did very like, well. I know a lot of people didn't like it, which is why we're changing it back. But in terms of like the analytics, those clips absolutely crushed anything we've ever done. Like, yeah, we got more out of those clips than we did almost all of the year before. Yeah, which is crazy. Like because we, like like if you have a thousand people that click on one video, one full episode, and then you have half of that click on six, that's like three times more people for that one exact thing you're putting out. And someone doesn't have to commit to watching a 60 minute video at yeah. once. There's a nine minute snippet. They watch the nine minutes, maybe watch a different one the next day. Yep. And it worked well. We, in theory, we thought it was going to work and it did. Yeah. And but it did what we thought we did. It would do <laughs> English. <laughs> but there's still a lot of people that just want us to go back to the they want to turn it on. Either listen to it in the background or just let it play. Yeah. We hear you. And we, I understand that. I, I, I totally understand. That's why we're changing it back. Yeah. So the full length video, uh, full podcast is going to go on the post to post podcast YouTube channel. <laughs> yep. English for me too. And then we are going to do some highlight videos, I believe. Yep. yep. Just some extra, you know, if you want to watch it again, you can. But if you've already seen the podcast, I guess you don't have to. But that is will also help bring some new people in. Yeah. And then I'm going to make some videos on my channel both some conversations that happened during the podcast and I'll, I'll do a little intro to the video on my channel. I'll talk about why I want you guys to listen to this conversation. Hey, we have a podcast. If you didn't know kind of thing and uh, just to bring more awareness to the podcast. Channel. Yeah. So we're trying to give you what you want. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> Basically. Yeah. Okay. So, so playoffs are here. They started yesterday, Saturday, depending on when you listen to this. So I have a trivia question. I want to get oh. right off the bat. I saw it in here and you said you have, what did you say somewhere? No peeking or something like I that? I said questions in a different document, LOL, no cheating. Cause I knew Neil might browse through the notes. Got so. The, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. You don't, they're not in yours. Cause if yeah, you look at, say, if I, you look at your notes, it has Neil on them and mine has Jason. Oh, on them. okay. Okay. Here's the trivia question. You guys can all play along if you want. You put me on the spot here. No, this is, this is something that you're not expected to know. Oh, okay. This is a, just wing it and hope you're right. Excellent. Okay. I wouldn't do that to you. So all of the teams that are in the playoffs right now. Yes. Which team in their home arena are going to have the most fans in attendance? Oh, that's tricky because we're talking anywhere. Geography and Yep. So you got to think of like what states are more relaxed. Uh, Obviously, it's not Canada. So you can take all the Canadian teams out of it. I will tell you that. I have a guess, but. The first team is miles ahead of anyone else. I will tell you that. I have a guess. The Carolina Hurricanes. That is incorrect. <laughs> okay, I have a second guess. Okay, I'll give you three guesses. Um, the Florida Panthers. That is also incorrect. I'll tell you who second and third are. This is your final okay, guess. Okay, my final guess. Second is St. Louis. Third is Colorado. Who is first? Minnesota. Nashville. 12,135, which is more than half of capacity. Second place is St. Louis with 9,000. Third place is Colorado hmm. with 7,700. Wow. So it's significantly more than the third place. That surprises me a little bit. Uh, it surprises me too. Do you know that Nashville's blocking out-of-state purchases for playoff tickets again? That does not surprise me. It doesn't surprise me, but they just just a note it's happening again and people are angry. I was kind of wondering if that was going to happen because if you have such, like everywhere, like if you have such limited seating... Because, I mean, the, the Washington game was on last night and there was like one guy that you could see regularly that had a Boston yeah. jersey on. Everything else was just red. And I'm like, that's intense that that one Boston guy's in there. Like, <laughs> yeah. like it's really hard to get into. Like, I kind of get it, but it's not right. But I, I do get it. Like, if you're only going to allow half yeah. capacity or less than half capacity. Let's just say this. If I was a Boston fan, I would not be trying to fly to Washington to get into that game. I would be like, okay, those Washington fans can have that game. Now, if I lived in Washington and I was a Boston fan, heck yeah, I'm all over that. That's right. Because I just have, I have just as much right to be there as anyone else does. But yes. if I'm from out of town, which a lot of these teams have fans that travel, yep, I probably wouldn't do that. I, I would say if you can't fill your arena with your own fans, we'll give them a day. Open the tickets up locally yep. with, within within the state for 12 hours or 24 four hours. If there's anything left over after that, open it up to the whole like yep. domestically for the whole country. And if you can't fill your arena with your fans within 12 or 24 hours, that's your fault. Yep. So that's totally your fault. Yeah. But anyway, off topic. OK, so let's get into the game yesterday, since that is the only game that's happened so far. <laughs> but actually, 
There's a game on right now. Oh, snap. Did, yeah, you, did you know that? There's three games today. I figured there was an afternoon game. I, st- I watched the first half of the game that was on today. And oh, snap. Spoiler alert. I mean, you can give it because by the time yes. this podcast comes out. So the Islanders and Pen- Penguins are playing. Yep. Islanders scored for first. Pittsburgh scored second. Pittsburgh scored again. And that's kind of where I stopped watching. It is currently 3-3. Ooh. And there are three minutes left in the third Ooh, period. We're missing some good action. Then. It could go to overtime. We're missing some good action. Anyway, we're going to get into a little bit of predictions later. You've already given a lot of yours, but yeah, but yeah. So let's talk about the game that happened last night. All right. So there's one thing I want to do right off the bat. Um, Boston was down one nothing, and then DeBrus scored a goal, and v- Vitek Vanacek was in net for Washington, and. He wasn't really ready for the shot. It didn't look like, and he kind of stretched out to make the, the save and he mm. didn't. And DeBrus scored, but it was very clear as soon as that goal went in that he pulled something or yes. he did something. He tweaked something because he didn't get right back up. So Anderson comes in, oldest goalie in the league, basically. He's, he's almost 40. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. But then like the last time Anderson played in 2017, he like lit it on fire. So I'm like, hmm, okay, this isn't mm-hmm. necessarily a good thing. But in the first, for all you American people who may not have seen this, maybe you've seen this online, I don't know, because it's kind of like getting out there. Kelly Rudy, in the first intermission of Hockey Night in Canada, just blasted him, basically. And, and if, you, if you don't know who Kelly Rudy is, he's a former goaltender of the LA Kings when they went to the finals. Yep. He's a sports analyst now. He lives in Calgary. He's featured on CBC and Sportsnet or stuff. Yep. Yeah. Yep. CBC? Yep. Well, it's and Sportsnet sport, yeah. now, yeah. yeah. CBC and Sportsnet are basically the same now. Yeah. So anyway, sorry, continue. So anyway, he he basically went on this tirade about how he wasn't prepared and it, he wasn't professional and didn't take his job seriously because he didn't properly stretch out before the game. Oh boy, where do you start and where do I want to go? You know, I guess there's a part of me that I, I suppose I'm supposed to feel sorry for Vanacek, you know, his first ever NHL playoff start. But he gives up, first of all, it's a bad goal. He just wasn't ready. You could tell immediately that something was wrong. But I'm sorry, if you're an NHL goaltender, you should not be pulling or straining a muscle. That's one of your jobs to make sure that you're stretched out. And whether that means you stretch eight to ten times during the course of a day before the game to make sure this doesn't happen. I, I mean, that's you've got to be a better pro than that. And then it's unfair to the organization. It's unfair to Craig Anderson. Anderson in a week is going to be 40 years old. And I just think that when you're in that position, you've got to do all you can to make sure that you're stretched out. Now, if you have a different structural injury, like you hurt your knee or your shoulder or your wrist, I'm all good with that. And, you know, then you, then I do feel empathy or sympathy for you, but not not a pulled muscle. Is he, was this an assumption or did he? <laughs> this is an assumption. So he didn't watch the pregame warm up or anything like no, that? No, he just said, he said a goaltender should not be injured <laughs> with that kind of play. <laughs> like he said, if... And he said towards the end, like if, if it's like a knee thing or something like that, then he understands. But in terms of pulling a muscle, okay. there's no, it's unacceptable. He basically said, and this is like a, a newbie goaltender to the playoffs. Like what would happen if this was like Carey Price that pulled that injury? You think he's, you think he's saying the same no, thing there? hundred percent. He would not say that. He, I think that that comes off a bit of elitist in a way. I, why say that? Like, I, I don't get that. He is such an advocate for. I don't it was it seemed like it was a hot take out of nowhere like when there's an injury he's always on the victim's side almost always yeah he's a very big advocate for that and trying to make the game more clean and stuff so to kind of get on a guy's back when he just like pulled a like muscle m- is may- very odd maybe he's right but maybe. it just seemed like a really crazy like Goalies have pulled muscles before. Like, this isn't the first time a goalie's pulled a muscle. Mm. That doesn't necessarily mean they're unprepared for the game. Like, you can still stretch out and still pull a muscle, can you not? I would assume so. Like, I assume it's harder, but I assume it can still happen. That like, t- goalie does the splits and he gets injured. Like, that's a, you pull a groin or something. Like, that's not, this is not the first time. This, I think because this is a relatively new goaltender in the playoffs, he took some liberties here. Uh, does he have anything against Washington? I don't think so. Hmm. Maybe he's just trying to cause controversy. Now, from what I understand, the NBC feed in the States was kind of leaning Washington in their feed. I didn't see it from what I heard. Hmm. NBC does have a Washington affiliate that covers the team, but this was on the national broadcast. So technically that shouldn't have had anything to do with it. But apparently it was leaning a little bit Washington, but I'll leave that that I don't know because I never heard it. Interesting. Maybe they weren't. But anyway, I just thought that was a weird hot take. I was going to include the audio and then I forgot to bring it down to play it to you. So 
You just have to search for it. I pulled a muscle once. I was in Sobeys. <laughs> Okay. And uh, I saw an old an old guy. Sobeys is a grocery chain for you, unfamiliar with it. And he was walking real slow. And he had this like weird look on his face. And I was driving home and I uh, had someone with me. And I did an impression of the old dude and I did this face. <laughs> you pulled a muscle in your face? And I pulled a muscle in my, in my shoulder, in my back, Holy. in my neck. And it lasted for three months. Like no. I couldn't even sleep on the left no side way. of my body. Yeah. And wow. all I did was make a face. You know, and you, like, you tense up your the neck muscles. Yeah. Man, I was done for like three months. I couldn't wow. even sleep on like the... You must have impersonated real good. <laughs> yeah. Anyways. That's crazy. So I understand that it can happen. <laughs> <laughs> That's completely random, but I love it. Yeah. All right, let's get back to the game. Okay, so I want to get my thoughts. I wrote down in my notes, I gave perspective from what I've seen from Boston, what I've seen okay. from Washington. Now, as a Boston fan, I obviously have more notes from Boston because I'm more familiar with those players than I am with Washington players. Like, I'm familiar with Washington's players, but... And you're more like me, too. You're probably more... Oh, yeah. Most uh, of these are negatives. Yeah, yeah you're, you're very critical of your own favorite team. <laughs> yeah. You're biased. So Okay. So first point I want to make about that game was I thought Boston's first line was basically non-existent. Bergeron came out and he won his first seven face-offs. He was 7-0. I think he finished 64% of the night. He played defensively fine. But in terms of offense, Bergeron was invisible. Mm. Marchand was not invisible for bad reasons. Yes. He was a puck giving away machine. I think there was five different times he literally passed it I to someone that, wearing a yeah. red sweater. And there was a, I don't know, a handful of other times where he tried to do his little dipsy doodles around someone, but they're, they're wise to that. They know he's going to do that. And yeah, he lost exactly. the puck every time. And Washington also has a little bit of a book on the Boston Bruins because of Zidane Chara. Yeah. He would have, he would have oh, informed yeah. the entire team. Oh, yeah. Hey, watch for this. He, this, this is a very typical action of Marshan. He's going to do this in this situation, catch him off guard and, yeah, stuff like that. So, Bergeron and Marchand had combined one shot on net. That's your top line. They both had around five minutes of power play time. Marchand had a little bit more. I think Bergeron was like four forty-eight or something like that. Hmm. One shot. Yeah. Now Pasternak, I think, had six. Where I honestly, okay, so I guess I didn't say this earlier. I only watched about maybe twenty-five to thirty percent of the game. It was off in the on the side. I was doing something else. Um, I don't know where I was going with this. <laughs> I don't know either. He was reconnecting with a long lost friend. I was, yes. Uh, actually, funny fr- funny fact. He's Someone act- that's been on this podcast. He's actually been on this podcast before, like the, f- yep. the fourth one. Yeah. All right. So I I can't think of a, what I was going to say, but <laughs> that's awesome. I just want to say they've only watched 25 to 30 percent of the game. So there are some things that I don't have any knowledge on. So that's kind of why you're leading the charge on this. Yep. And uh, I, I intensely watched the first five minutes, but there are definitely sections of the Boston of the played game. well the first five minutes of the game. If you would have went by the first five minutes of the game, you would have thought, all right, this is awesome. The first impression I got from the game was Washington's going to win this game because Ovechkin is pissed. Yep. And they didn't have an answer for him, which I have later down here. Like, like when they he, let him run around and they, they left him alone. When he came in and he, he let that hit. Oh, he crushed Krejci right at the start. Unbelievable. Krejci got murdered. I, that was the best start to a playoffs I think I've ever seen. Because it was instant. It was like in the first, what, 15 seconds of the game. It was pretty. It was pretty early on, yeah. And he was. He just showed that he was pissed. I'm like, okay, Washington might surprise me here a little bit. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I don't know where, where that's where I'm leading with that. <laughs> I, I don't just, know either. It's all good though. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so back to the first line. Some people online are saying that the first two lines cancel each other out, and that Washington's third and fourth line outplayed Boston, which is why they win. Mm. Now, there's no doubt about that. But I would argue that Washington's lines played better than Boston's first couple lines. But I still don't think Washington's lines played as well as they could have, which is kind of what I was saying in the opening of this, that I think Washington has more to give. And I think Boston has mm-hmm. way more to give. Okay. Like they neither, neither of those teams were at peak performance last night. Boston was terrible. Washington was a little bit better, but Washington's got more to give too. And Boston came into the playoffs playing very like well. Like that was Marshan's worst game of the year, I would say by far. That's unfortunate. Yeah. Do you think there was too much of a break? I don't know. Or- that's, that's what I was saying last night. Is it just, it, This almost looks like they're playing a preseason game out there. Like, it just mm-hmm. doesn't... I Odd. don't know. Um, Again, back. Boston's lack of physicality. Very immediate. There was no Washington, response Washington to that. was hitting, hitting, hitting. Boston had... If you look at the stat sheet, Boston has hits. But it's not the hits and the toughness that Washington had. You can't... And, and the size difference is very apparent, too. Like, Washington's a bigger team than Boston. Like, yeah. And that wasn't the case not so long ago. But, but you can't quantify... The quality of hits with looking at numbers. No. Like, you, you have to watch the game, and you yeah. have to realize that the hits that were laid by Washington, yeah. man, they're pushing, they're Big pushing the bar. Yeah. I, I hope there's tweaks to the Bruins lineup next game, Monday, to try to address this. Like, obviously, we don't have 
the overall personnel to go toe to toe with them, but we do have players that are that didn't play in that game that are tougher and yeah, will, definitely. And like people like Kevin Miller, which I'm going to get to, he's he's literally a tough guy. He's had two fights where he's ended two people's careers. That's how tough he is. He was also non-existent last night, like mm. no toughness at all. So I expect more from him. Did Richie? Uh, Richie, he, Richie scored physical? a goal. Yeah, he no, did. I saw that. He was not physical. Other than that goal, that third line was non-existent because he was he's a pretty physical guy. He'll 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 yeah. throw it around his weight. Our fourth line, I thought, did well. Our third line was terrible. Other than that goal they scored, which was pretty fluky too. It kind of yeah, yeah. So um, I've already talked about the passing. The passing was atrocious. Tape to tape passes, breakouts, neutral zone passes. It was horrible. The um, I just want to comment quickly. The effort from Smith. I think it was. I don't know if it's a power play goal or not. But he had lost the puck and then he scrambled and he fell. He off. swung was, at it three times. That was unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, it missed. Like miss, the, miss. The level of effort that went into <laughs> just trying to control. You can't that say puck. he wasn't working hard. And because of his actions, they scored on that yep, on that play. They kept right. it in the zone. I thought that was I thought that was phenomenal. That that play right there is how you win the Stanley Cup. Yeah, extra effort plays like hard that. work, great hard work. Yes, digging in. Um, also, another thing, the Hockey Night in Canada com- commentators they. They talked about Jeremy Lozon last night saying he had a breakout game. And I was just like, what are you talking about? <laughs> the entire game, I was watching with my dad and my brother-in-law, and we were just swear word at him the whole game. <laughs> he was so bad out there. I, I, like, we were like, this guy has got to be pulled out and put in for someone else next game. And they were they were showing how, like, he went over and, like, I think Ovechkin hit someone in the in the boards, and then Lozon went over and started roughing him up. He ended up getting a penalty for it. Oh, I do And they were that, like, yeah. oh, we love to see this kind of stuff. It's like... You just sent Boston into the penalty box. Like, what are you talking about? Irresponsible. Like, yeah, yeah. you want a response, but that response is just going to get you a penalty. Yeah. Like, o- Ovechkin just fell back and just stood there like, uh. And you can respond and get your message across and maybe get your message across more the next shift. Yeah. You don't have to go overboard and it's just it's irresponsible, especially in the playoffs. Yeah. So I think they're impressed with his scrums. Like, oh, just, that's like, an odd thing like, to be impressed by. <laughs> I think that speaks to the volume of the toughness in the game that Boston did not have. Mm. Like Washington was just running all over us. And then Jeremy Lowe's on after whistles going over and getting in someone's face. Oh yeah. We love to see it. That's a breakout game for him. Like, what are you talking about? This guy needs to be pulled and you need to lose your job. Epic. <laughs> I, uh, I remember when Boston used to be the most difficult team to play against in the NHL because of, for physicality reasons. Totally. And that is just simply not the case anymore. They're a smaller team. They're more skilled, but they're not, they're they're difficult to to play against in certain aspects, but not in general physically. Like no. they're way bigger teams. Look what happened to St. Louis. Yeah, when they played St. Louis in the finals. Yeah, um, Boston's power play was also atrocious last night. It's kind of been bad lately. It hasn't been great. But as I said in 2011, we had the worst penalty or power play. Yes, won the cup exactly. So if you can score five on five, it's not a big deal. But we need more out of those first two yes. lines. Yeah. Um, I got a note here on Miller. Basically, what I said before, he's he's a super tough player. If you ever seen him without his shirt on, he's just ripped. He's Is got he the, really? He's got the big whatever you call these things that are up on your neck. I don't know what they're called. I don't know. I don't. I don't have those. <laughs> no, neither do I. <laughs> anyway, I, I think he gets the hint that he needs more more is expected out of him because him and Lozon not a good night for them. Hmm. DeBrus Hall McAvoy. I thought they had good games. I yeah. thought Rask overall did well. He's getting chewed out big time online for letting the, the overtime goal in. I think that was fluky. It hit him in the stomach, fell, bounced on his pad weird, and went underneath him and behind him. I've never seen a puck bounce like that. Neither have I. Very, it, it literally it fell straight, straight down. down from his stomach and then went in. It just hit at, his pad. At weird. a 90 degree angle, it's like, yeah. it made no sense. I'm not blaming Rass for that. No. No, no, definitely not. Um, I uh, I thought uh, DeBrusque was great. DeBrusque was good. He had a, re- he had a lot he got, of chances. He got a goal. He needed that. Yeah. He's on the fourth line. He should be higher than a fourth line player. Yes. I think I think the fourth line played well, though, and I think that having them going is important. I think he's a top six player. Yeah. When Boston won the cup, they had a, they had the Merlot line, the fourth liners. Yes. That This could be that, but not, not a toughness line. It could be like a skill line. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So in terms of Washington, I actually thought Tom Wilson had a really good game. I saw someone say that he had a bad game. And from no. what I saw in the game, I'm like, no, dude, Tom Wilson would play okay. really good. Maybe if you're a Washington fan, you can pick it apart. Like, maybe he wasn't running over, taking people's heads off. Maybe he wasn't chirping enough. Like, maybe that he wasn't doing the gritty, dirty things that they expect out of him. Like, I don't yes. know. It depends on who's making the comment, I guess. I guess it's best based on your expectations. But. In terms of a Boston fan watching, Tom Wilson stood out the most out of every player. If we're talking me. just hockey, like not Two points, goal and assist. Hockey? He, he didn't take really any dumb penalties. Yeah. 
he was he was physical. He, I think he had four hits. And that's why I get so frustrated when he does that stupid stuff because he's a good player. He's a super good player. And I don't like when people say that he's not a good hockey player. He is. He's just like the same as Brad Marchand. <laughs> like my dad last night was saying, I just hate that Wilson after he scored. Sure look good in a Bruin uniform, though. <laughs> <laughs> that was literally the next line that came out of his mouth. Yeah, it's the same with Brad Marchand. He's a really good hockey player. Nazem yeah. Kadri. He doesn't need to do that stuff. Nelson and and Marshawn's toned it down because ownership talked to him. Like he literally got spoken to by the Jacobs people and said, "Listen, oh, I cut this crap I didn't out." Know that. And he's been better ever since that. Wow. And he's like third in points in the league right now, or something like that. Mm-hmm. He's an amazing player. He's he, playing really well right now, yeah. except for last night. <laughs> Come on, Marshawn. I guess everyone deserves or everyone is entitled to a bad night. Game one of the Stanley Cup Finals is probably not the time to have it. Game one should possibly be your best game. Yeah. Other than anything that happens in the finals, but there'll be lots of tape. They're going to see how bad they like they I expect a huge response. Do you think uh, anything has to do with a lack of practice so far this season that a lot of teams are experiencing? <sighs> I don't know. I don't think so. I don't think so either. It wasn't like set plays were destroying Boston last night. It was just they were just it something like it's like they were tired. They just didn't care. Like, I don't I don't know how to describe it. Like they also have history with Washington too. bad history. Yeah, this was so. the matchup I did not want. My dad, my brother in law were all like. <laughs> Hope he's gone. We got this because Hope he was the Bruin killer. Yes. And I said, it doesn't matter. The history is there that Washington kills Bruins mm-hmm. in the playoffs. So oh, we'll, we'll see. <laughs> um, I thought Anderson played well when he came in. He did. He played so well. I thought Dowd on the back end is a great defenseman. I'm actually super impressed with him. He's a big guy back there. I really liked his play. Oshie did good. I actually, when we went into overtime, we all took predictions on who was going to score the goal. And I picked Oshie. <laughs> I was right. Yeah. Uh, Orlov is amazing. I'm very impressed yeah. with Orlov. And Mantha, I thought, had a pretty good game. Mantha too. started pretty, pretty good. He has, he has a lot of patience, which is, which is great to see. I have a note here about Ovechkin being physical. We already talked about this, mm. crushing Krejci right off the start. That, start. That was amazing. When you think about Ovechkin, you think about a guy who can score goals and, yeah. you know, is super skilled defensively. People don't realize how physical Ovechkin yeah. can be and how big he is. And he, like, he's literally a tank. Like, he's a thick boy. Oh yeah. And I've seen him hit guys bigger than him and destroy them. <laughs> yeah. So and he's not he's not playing quite at the peak that he used to, but he still has his little office set up. Yeah. <laughs> and he's still going to score from there. So you still got to be very careful of it. Exactly. He's having a bit of down year, obviously, with his goals and yeah. everything. But he is the veteran and you can't, under, can't underestimate him. Yeah. I also thought Washington did a really good job preventing Boston from getting shots in the circles. Um, it seemed like all of our shots were just coming from way out, like bad angles, like no danger. Like, I thought Anderson played well, but I didn't think he was really tested either. I thought he made a couple of awkward plays. Like, at one point, he was backwards when the puck was, like, under his feet. And, like, Boston almost scored there. Yeah. There's, There's a, two of those, I think. A couple of opportunities where Boston could have yeah. kind of walked away with this game. Yeah. And then just maybe luck, but maybe good play. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. But didn't happen. All I know is I want to see more out of game two from both teams. I yeah. definitely want to see more out of Boston. And I don't know. Maybe if there was more fans in the, maybe it was loud. Like, I don't know. It's just something seemed off to me. Did you feel like you were having less of an experience watching that game versus a regular playoff game? I don't know because I was watching at the, at the camp and the TV is only like <laughs> 32 inches. So it's like really small. And there's like a bunch of us sitting in a horseshoe around it. Yeah. So that was different. I don't know. All right. It didn't feel like a playoff game to me, but I, I'm hoping, I'm sure some of the games today. And moving forward, I think this series will turn into that. But I'm just, I want more. I got to check a score update <laughs> real quick. Um, while you're doing that, I'm going to talk about quick predictions. So have you got all of your predictions? You don't have them all yet, do you? Uh, I have the, the I have the bracket out, but I don't have the individual series previews out. Today, when the Pittsburgh Islanders won, the Tampa Bay, Florida won, and then the Vegas, Minnesota one is going to be scheduled to release. Actually, I think it's already released. Okay. Release it too. Okay. So I think I've seen your bracket one. So I kind of know where you're going with things. Yeah, um, I I found some of the series extremely difficult to predict. Sometimes you get a good gut feeling, like this the Colorado St. Louis one. I think statistically, and even just look at the rosters, Colorado should win this series. Yep, and I I predicted Colorado to win the series, but and I don't know why I don't feel confident about that. But I don't, and even if I had chosen St. Louis, I still don't feel confident. There's just something about this series, and I can't explain it in the inside of me. I just don't feel confident. I, f- I think whatever I choose in this series, I'm going to be wrong. I, that's all I can say. Like, I just, I can't explain it. I don't have that feeling about any other series. Yeah. Just one of those things. Well, I, I mean, St. Louis can show, showed what they did or show you. Jeez, holy I got you. Sorry, people. St. Louis has shown <laughs> what they can do yeah. with their last regular season game. They were down three, nothing in Minnesota. They scored seven straight. That was unbelievable. Then they're going into the playoffs. I shut that game off when, when Minnesota scored their third goal. Cause I had stuff to do. I'm like, okay, well, Minnesota's going to win. 
And then someone, I think it was in our group chat on Discord, said that the score was 7 3. I'm like, wait, what? No, the, you got to be joking. But yeah. So I'm, I'm with you. If I, if, it, if I had the paper in front of me, I'd be scratching Avalanche in. I would not be surprised if St. Louis. Like, that's not an upset if St. No, Louis I, beats, wins I that series. I honestly wouldn't be surprised. I'm cheering for Colorado, but I'm not going to be surprised if St. Louis wins. So you're predicting Colorado as well? I'm predicting Colorado. All right. Well, what about the other series in that uh, division, which is Vegas, Minnesota? Is that what it is? Yeah. Vegas, 100%. If Vegas loses this series, I, I, I it just... Has, it has to be classified as an upset, doesn't it? Like, Minnesota... Has played very well. This yes, year. but this is this is Vegas's year, isn't it? They're built so well. Mm-hmm. They're one of the best defensive teams in the league that can also score. Like when you look at the Islanders, that's a strictly defensive team. Yeah, but Vegas is also an incredible defensive team, but they can score at the same time. So they are built to win. They're that team is literally built to go deep in the playoffs. They can contribute from from all lines. It's a really smart structure of the team. And if they lose, it's just it's going to be devastating to a lot of Vegas fans. And I like Minnesota. I'm not going to be upset if Vegas loses. Yep. I like Vegas more, but I also have really enjoyed watching Minnesota this year. So mm-hmm. I am personally choosing Vegas in six. I assume you're also choosing oh, yeah, Vegas. Oh, yeah, I'm Vegas. I don't know games, but. Uh, the other series that are happening in the West is Tampa, Florida. I'm taking Tampa. I want Florida. I also want Florida. I did predict Florida to win in seven. I like your I like your pick. Only because I'm trying to will them in. <laughs> I like but your pick. I think no. logically and objectively, Tampa yep. is going to win the series. But I hope it's close. I hope it goes seven games because I think that rivalry being created that doesn't exist for whatever reason between the two teams. This is, is the like, first time they're playing each other in playoffs, isn't it? Yeah. And how? Like, that's crazy. Like, they sh- they should have played so many times up to this level. But you know what? We're here. It's an odd year. Yep. So let's let's have fun with the series and let's see what happens. So you're saying Tampa. I'm saying Florida. I'm saying Tampa, but go Florida. That's, yeah, go Florida. I'm cheering for Florida. Now, the other one in that uh, division was the Carolina-Nashville series. What do you think there? This, is, this one to me is probably the, I won't say the biggest no-brainer to me, but maybe the second biggest no-brainer. This Carolina be- has to take this, like smoke it. They ha- and they, there's expectations with Carolina. Like five now. games max. Yeah, that's, that's I, yeah five games. That's what I'm thinking. Five games. I think Nashville can definitely sneak out one. But the Carolina fans aren't expecting the Carolina Hurricanes to be a relatively general, you know, competitive team. They're not expecting them to make the playoffs. They're not expecting them to get past the first round. All of their expectations are now exceeding all of that stuff <laughs> mm-hmm. because of the last couple of years. This team is built so well. The expectation is for them to get to the Stanley Cup final. That is the only acceptable option. And hey, maybe they won't win, but that is the expectation that they yep. get to the final. So there's a lot of pressure on Carolina here. And Nashville has also played very well coming in to the end of their regular season. I'm not saying there's there's, there's a big underdog factor here. I'm still predicting Carolina at five, but you can't underestimate Nashville. Yeah, You just can't. So yep. I don't know. And it's, it's cool because like, if you go back to like the... I don't know if it was the first season of our podcast or second when Carolina wasn't quite as good, but it was clear that yeah. they were, they had a bunch of young guns and they were going to be good. And we're here now. You could just see the structure just forming. Like we talked about Carolina has a bright future. They're going to be good. We're here now. Exactly. Yeah. It's like it's, the, the time is now. So yeah. I think they're going to go deep, but yeah, I don't know. I wouldn't be upset if Nashville, like, I like Nashville too. I, I like your story. So. I think I would be a little bit upset if Nashville Really? Won. Yeah, I, um, I consider that an upset. Just, I don't want Nashville in there. Nashville's had their time. And they didn't get it done. They didn't get it done. Okay. I'm on to something else now. <laughs> You're on to something else. Yeah. Right. You had my attention. You lost it. And Someone else has it now. New flavor of the week. Yep. Yeah. I'm with Kale. Let's go, Carolina, unless you meet me. All right. Gotcha. So that leaves us with uh, the Pittsburgh Islanders. That's a tough one. I think it's going to be Pittsburgh. They own the seasonal series. They dominated the Islanders. You this. Have you seen an update on the game? It's in overtime. Okay, yeah, but you don't know who won yet. It was in, it's kind of it's kind of bold making a prediction when we already know who won the first game. But yeah, it's still it's overtime. They're three minutes into overtime. I like that it's that close though. That's yeah, good. that's what I want. I want all these teams to play as many games as possible, 
because I want to watch as much hockey as possible. Yeah. And I think it's good hockey. And I game sevens, there's nothing more exciting than a game, game seven. Seven. Doesn't matter what teams are playing. It's a game seven. Let's, you know, go out, give it a hundred percent. I don't care who's playing. I know I would I just want to see it. I want to see the intensity. I want yep. to see the physicality. I want to see the, the fans go nuts. If there are any fans, <laughs> that's what I want to see. Yeah. Do you think watching the Canadian teams is gonna be weird watching playoffs with no fans? Yes. Yeah, I do too. And I think it's gonna be boring. Not because of the fans, I just don't I'm not excited about those series. Like Winnipeg has the whiteout, which is one of the coolest things ever. It's yeah. just like white everywhere. There's none of that. Yeah, there's it's Montreal fans not gonna have the Montreal fans. Toronto fans are yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding, but yeah, I usually only see a bunch of business suits. And yeah, that used to be the case. Not quite Bank anymore. Yeah. But okay, who else we got? The oh, we do have Toronto, Montreal. Did you give your prediction for Pittsburgh. Oh, Pittsburgh, hundred percent. Okay, I'm I'm also saying Pittsburgh. But I think it's going seven games. That's another one where if the Islanders win, I won't be shocked. No, okay, that that was so difficult for me to predict. I just I don't feel confident about it. The teams are so close that I don't know. Um, Boston, Washington. I have Washington because. I don't remember. I just think, I I just think, I think you had Boston. I think I, yeah, I think I might've, I think it's seven. I think you you were questioning some of Washington's things going in. As soon as I seen we were playing Washington, that was like, this is the matchup I don't want. Okay. So that's why I'm saying Washington probably has it. They've already, they're already down a game, which kind of helps that, but I'm hoping we turn it around. Okay. Um, so let's guess the Canadian division is the only one that's left. Winnipeg, Edmonton. (sighs) I don't know, man. Winnipeg has not looked good in the past couple of months, but... Winnipeg is... What are you doing, Winnipeg? I, <laughs> Last, like, three weeks. It's Like, what are you doing? It's bad. Like, are you trying to... Like, I don't know what you're trying to do. It's 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 almost embarrassing that they've they've been allowed into the playoffs. Same with Montreal, I feel. Like, there are so... I feel like there's better teams not in the playoffs than those two teams. And I but know. I feel like Winnipeg should be the second best team in the division. Absolutely. Like, that's Like, what, without question. They frustrate me because they're a better team than what they've been. They have the... I like their depth. I like their goaltending. I like their top six. I like their coaching style and their structure. Mm-hmm. Like, this is a good team. Yeah. And I think they could be competitive if, if they're going to play their game that we know that they can. I think that they could absolutely beat Edmonton. But I don't have any confidence in Winnipeg right now. And I think McDavid is just too pissed. That tells you something when you're picking Winnipeg to win this or Edmonton to win a series. <laughs> I guess so. Like right? just from past yeah. experience alone. I know. So I'm, I have to go with Edmonton. I'm going to pick, I'm also picking Edmonton to win, to yeah. win that series. Now the big dog, by the way, before we switch, okay. did you know that Connor McDavid had points in 57%, more than 57% of all goals scored by the team for the entire year? So <laughs> that's, that's, that's unacceptable. That's a, that's a super stat. I wonder if it's ever been higher. It's other than the Gretzky. highest of all time. He beat Meryl Lemieux by like 0.2 of a percent or something. Like that. Are you serious? It's a new record. Wow. I wonder if that. Well, I, guess. I think he was like 57.5 and Lemieux was 57.3. It was it was really close. It was close to that. I wonder if the percentage is. But can you imagine 57 percent of all goals your, your your team scored? He's either scoring them or he's assisting on them. <laughs> and you have four lines. It's insane. <laughs> it's and absolutely he, insane. He had 105 points this year. I he obviously plays the power play. They have the best power play in the league. I don't think he plays in the penalty, penalty kill though. No, nope. at all ever. Not that he would score a lot. It's 13 million dollar player. You should play he, everywhere. I mean, I don't know why I just said that. Of course he would score a lot. Why wouldn't you? Like they should play him on the on the penalty kill. Brad Marchand plays in the penalty kill. He's got he scores the most short handed goals. <laughs> in the yes, league. that's right. Do it. Can you imagine having a Connor McDavid that's like twice as fast as Marchand? Yeah, twice as skilled. Just do it, Edmonton. I don't know. They don't want him to get him hurt or what. But Damn, it could be. Anyway, Toronto, Montreal, hands down. This one is a no-brainer. Toronto is going to clean the clocks in Montreal. If Toronto, they don't even have to play these games. I, they really don't. Like They really don't. If Toronto loses this series, I think it'll be more embarrassing than losing to, to Boston in 2011, was it? Oh, that's 2013. Was 2011, 2013. I can't remember. Yeah, the down 4-1. Yeah. <sighs> that's tough. I, I, don't, just, I don't know if anything's going to beat because that. Because both of those teams were decent. Like that was a competitive series. Yep. Montreal's like not a great team. And Toronto should have won that series in game six. Yeah. They let their foot off the gas. Should have won it in game seven. And all I remember is just Reimer laying on his stomach like this. It's <laughs> over. And Boston just having the biggest celly on the ice ever. Yep. Now, I'm not completely dogging Montreal. If Carey Price shows up and is the Carey Price that we hope that he can be, and, and Montreal just plays average... Toronto's goaltending is questionable. They've got Jack Campbell starting. Now, Jack Campbell won 10 in a row or whatever. Yeah. But he's not that good, I don't think. 
He was letting in like average of three goals a game, but Toronto was just covering that up by scoring more to win. That is the thing that people don't they they it's hard to it's hard to realize that about Toronto because they win so many games. But you have to look at their their goal differential and, and mm-hmm. it's like they're not a team that has two hundred and ten goals for and one hundred and twenty four goals against. Yeah, they've got a decent amount of goals against because yeah. of the style of the hockey that they play. Yeah, now it's successful. Yep. And it'll be successful against Montreal. That's all I have to do is keep... But like you said, if Carey Price shows up like he did last year... It, it, Mon- Tro- Montreal has a chance. Montreal needs goal scoring. That leads me to my next problem. <laughs> did you see the projected Montreal lines? Yes, and I know a lot of people are not happy with this. Did you see the coach's quote? Uh, I think so, but remind me. Okay. For people who don't know, who is not on the lines? Cole Caulfield. Do you know why he's not on the lines? Because... Saul has more experience. Yes, they need players with experience. <laughs> yeah. This guy came in. He scored two goals, won you two overtime games. Yeah, he scored. Like and we need someone with experience. <laughs> he literally won you two games when he came up, but we're not going to play him in the playoffs because we need guys with experience. Exactly. And it's a team that can't score, by the way. So to leave off the one person who potentially could score is completely like I, unacceptable. Like, I got no bones with Toronto. Like, I listen to Toronto radio every day. They're probably the team I know the most about because I love listening to Toronto radio. I don't know why, but I'm all about Toronto losing. <laughs> like, I'm not going to hide that because it makes for more dramatic radio because you get the fans calling in, you get the people tear it down, yeah. doom and gloom. Like I love that crap. This is not the team to do it. Like, I'm sorry, but no, it's, it's I just... will have to do something bold. If, if Montreal wins this series, I don't know what I'll do, but I'll do something bold and I'll, I promise you that. You, oh, okay. I don't know what it is. I don't want to come up with anything right now, but I'm just so confident that it's not going to happen. If, if, I'm going to worry about it. Okay. Okay. How about this? If Montreal wins the series, I will find a Montreal water tattoo thing and we'll put it on your forehead. <laughs> okay. And let's get, do it. You have to do a podcast with a Montreal I will do water. that. Okay. 100%. <laughs> I will do that. Epic. It'd be really good if you found one that took up my whole face. Oh, I could, I could probably find Just like to- one of those like Buffalo Bills guys. just like... Just covered. Could probably painted on. Could do that. Okay, I will do that. Montreal wins this <laughs> series. I will wear a big tattoo on my face. Amazing. That's how confident I am that's not going to happen. And not only should, should Toronto win this series, but they should win the next series too. And that's nothing against Winnipeg. That's nothing against Edmonton. But the Toronto Maple Leafs have one of the best defensive, you know, lineups in the entire league. But Edmonton's not going to shut down Toronto. No, Winnipeg's has potential to shut down Toronto more than Montreal and Edmonton, but I still don't know if they can do it as well as a lot of the other teams in the league. So Toronto might get past Edmonton and Winnipeg and Montreal, but when they get to that conference finals yeah. and have to face a, a team that is I'm a little you. bit more defensively minded, yeah. depending on who the team is, they're going to be in trouble. I think it's a no brainer that Toronto's coming out of that division, the North division. It's, yeah. It's, like I don't think it's, the they comp- should, the competition is just not there. Like if you can't compare any of those teams to like a Colorado, for example, or a Vegas, like it's just, I think, I think they're going to be due for a wake up call when they do play that third round series, wherever that may be. I, I think Edmonton has the best chance of all the teams because of McDavid, because of Dry Seidel, and yeah. Smith can get in these weird zones where he can play unbelievable. Mm-hmm. So I think Edmonton does actually have a legitimate chance to beat Toronto, but overall, Toronto should be coming out of this this whole division. 100%. And if they end up playing like Carolina, or the Islanders, or a team that can literally play the matchup game and shut down Tavares, Marner, Nylander, Matthews. They've got so many people. Like, they can shut all those down. If that happens, Toronto's done. I don't know. I I think Toronto's good. I just think the division they're in right now is definitely kind of weak. Yes, it is the weakest of all It's not preparing them for a harder... That's correct. So that's going to be their challenge is... To make sure, you know, they pre-scout. I don't even know if scouts are allowed to travel. I guess down the States they are. They're going to have to pre-scout. They're going to have to have everything done because they're going to be due for a wake-up call once. Because I do think they are going to win the North Division. Yeah, and I think... And I'm not counting them out. Like, I, I'm not saying the Leafs can't win everything. No, they can. They can, for sure. they got a good team. And I'm sorry, <laughs> I apologize to all you Leafs fans out there because I def- we, we throw them out of the bus all the time. But A little bit, yeah. But here's the, here's the good thing about the Toronto Maple Leafs. If they find themselves in a situation... They have, like, maybe they're down two or three goals. And I guess depending on who they play. But they have probably the ability that no other team has to this level. I've seen Toronto be down in a game and score four goals in ten minutes. Yep. And and be on top again. I've, like, multiple times during the season, they just 
They just have that ability to just decide, I think we want to win this game. Yep. And then they just go out and then they just do it in 10 minutes because they have the offensive power to do that. And it's just, I know Edmonton does too, but not at the same level that the Maple Leafs do. And they have, they also have depth too, like players like Hyman mm-hmm. and like these, there's a lot of potential in, in the, in the Maple Leafs. They need to, their, def, their defensive core is better than it was last year. Yeah. It's probably better than it's been the last decade. Yeah. They're tougher now. They're tougher. Uh, the goaltending is still a little questionable, but, that's, s- that's, but still. That's the weakness right now is the goaltending. Right now, maybe Campbell will come out and play well. I think he will. Campbell can also get in his head really bad too. Cause there, there was a game that he lost and he was really down on himself saying, you know, I let the guys down, blah, blah. Yeah. You can't be like that. If you're a goaltender, you got to flip the switch. That's, exactly. that's erased. We're playing the next game. Yeah. And I don't know if Campbell is ready for that for playoffs, but we'll see. If you have a bad day one and you go into day two, you make day two, day one. Here's the, here's my question. Cause Anderson came back and he's not playing very well either right now. Yes. Well, Campbell is playing well. Anderson is not, which is why Campbell's starting. But do you think they make the the switch if if let's just say Toronto or Toronto loses three one or something in the first game? First game, or no? Let's say five two more goals on okay. Campbell. Five two, five four, five three. Let's just say he lets him five. Yep. Do you think Anderson's playing the next game? One hundred percent. Yeah. One hundred percent. Uh, yes. Yes. And if he wins, they keep rolling with him. If they yeah, you play the hot goalie and just see where it goes. Basically, I think. Yeah, I'm with you. Okay, so speaking of the third round, we have an issue with the Canadian border still. Still. Um, obviously, we have a team that's going to come out of Canada, and they need to be able to play one of the other three teams in the States. Yep. As it is right now, those three American teams, whoever they will be, are not allowed to come into Canada. I, I, I get it, but I don't at the same time. Like I, th- I feel like we're beyond that. Like If all these players are going to be vaccinated. I don't correct? think it's... It's not a COVID issue. I think it's a visual issue. Oh, okay. Because you got Ontario in lockdown. They just extend their lockdown another two I weeks. Understand. It's optically, it looks bad for them to open the border to let hockey players come through to people who are not hockey fans. Right. They're going to say, why are you doing that when everything is literally shut down? Like, I'm not allowed to leave my house, but you're letting these hockey players come for, mm. back across the border. here. Which, and that's that's what they're playing against is... Because I don't think it's an issue. They're they're quarantining themselves. They're they're kind of self bubbling with their group. They're all vaccinated. So One shot. I assume it's not a health issue or an exposure issue. It's an optics issue. It's totally not. To me, it's an optics issue. That's unfortunate. Yeah. Like I understand it in a way, but still, I think we're beyond that. Like just. Yeah. Just get. So it the on. NHL has told the Canadian government, we need to know by June first mm. whether you're going to let us come through or not. Because that's the we got to know. We what, just got to know what will happen. So if they are not allowed. To cross the border, they are going to ship whoever wins the Canadian division to a U.S. city of a team that is not in the playoffs. And they will not have to quarantine, is that correct? Nope. Okay. And that will be their new new home base for as long as they continue to play. So hypothetically, if they play Pittsburgh, Toronto, <laughs> they could or, be playing out of Canadian team. They could play out of Buffalo. It could be a Buffalo or Philadelphia. It could be anywhere. Okay. Interesting. And they will be allowed to have fans in the arena. So, so who are going to be the fans? Are they going to be cheering for that Canadian team? Or is it just going to be whoever the American team is, their fans coming over? Ooh. Because Canadian fans can't travel down to go watch the game. Toronto has probably the biggest fan base that travels for the team, both yes, in baseball true. and hockey. They're not allowed to cross the border to go watch this game. But down in the States, let's just say Pittsburgh's playing. They Ooh. are allowed to. So are, are those Pittsburgh fans going to take the trip to Buffalo or to Philly. And then when the, when the Toronto's playing their home games, it's going to be a crowd full of people for the other team. What if they played in Buffalo? Cause it's geographically the closest city. Yep. Buffalo fans don't like, there's a, there's a bit of a rivalry there, even though Buffalo is not competitive. Buffalo arena usually sees a lot of Toronto fans because they're so close. Yeah. That would be so funny if all the Buffalo fans showed up with Buffalo gear on and <laughs> booed the Leafs the entire game. <laughs> That'd be so funny. Or any, it doesn't have to be the Leafs. It could be, it could be any combination of teams. Yeah. And it's too bad because technically they're only like, whatever, half an hour away from the border or something to Buffalo. It's like right yeah. there. They can't even just like take that couple hour trip home because if they went home, they have to quarantine for four, 14 hours or 14 days. Yeah. So they yeah, couldn't yeah. come back and play the next game. So they literally, even though they're that close, they can't just go home and then come back to Buffalo and travel back and forth to Buffalo. They Whatever city they choose. So hypothetically, we'll say Boston goes to whatever, and it's Montreal. Okay. 
If you pick Montreal's city, home city, to be anywhere near Boston, I think that is completely unacceptable because, like you said, all the fans from Boston are just going to go to that game. But they might do that in terms of logistics to keep the cost down. They could. But, I, th- but you're totally that's right. That's not fair. You're totally right. They need to put that city in Salt Lake. <laughs> Find some arena in Salt Lake and I, go there. I completely agree with you, but I can totally see them keeping it close to keep costs down like, because of COVID. Like Logistically, that makes sense. But there would be. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see what happens in the third round if they do. Man. Some people are thinking the Canadian government's going to let them do it because they just yeah. like there's like we're not quite at the level of the vaccine rate that the states is. I don't think, but it's it's getting better. So yeah, you got your vaccine. I got my shot in the know. arm right here. I did not. Um. So we'll see. Okay, you had a video about Jack Eichel. But I did. I, I want to talk about it because the podcast has been off for, for four months. And it is something that we would have discussed if the podcast was yeah. going on. So, yeah, let's talk. Okay. So I actually didn't see your video. I know you talked about it. I know Rude. you sent me the quote. I know. <laughs> you put out a lot of videos, I know. Man. It's too I many. I can't stand. It's not too many. I wouldn't watch my videos in it either. So. I just have, especially back then, my free time is just. Mm-hmm. And I've actually been working on our bottle out lately, too. So. Oh, snap. <laughs> well, I'll Another plug. Later. Join Discord. Yeah, join your Discord. So can you recap? Your video, or should I just say what I have? Because I, I, I feel dumb if I'm recapping things you've done, but or should I just go with it? Just go with it, and then I'll okay, I'll I'll pick it up. So Jack Eichel had the quote that kind of stirred things up. You did have that. I know you had that because yes. you sent that to me. Yeah. So if you didn't see it, he basically I'm not going to read it. He just said that he's not happy with the way that his treatment's been being handled because he's injured, and that he just wants to get healthy and be ready to play hockey next year, wherever that may be. That's the part that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, wherever you play for, you play for this team. Like, and you're on a lengthy contract yes. as well. Yeah, so that's a very interesting statement. You're a fifty million dollar player. Like, hmm? but he fe- he feels completely disconnected from the organization. Yeah, like management wise and. So did you or break? Did you break down why he's not happy about the way he's been feeling? Uh, well, he wanted a surgery. Yeah. Did you talk about the surgery? Uh, I didn't talk about specifically. What okay, I have I have the specifics. Okay. I yeah, want to talk, and, and and this is this. This will kind of shine a light on why Buffalo is hesitant to do it. Okay, so Kevin Adams um, confirmed that he has a herniated disc in his up here. So that's what's causing him problems. The team decided that they wanted Eichel to go on a 12-week rest period okay. just to see if it would, I don't know if it would heal or if it would work itself out, but they want to see if they can put him on a long rest and avoid having to put surgery on his neck because right. he's an expensive player. They don't want to... Yeah, surgery yeah, if they yeah. don't have to, right? Exactly. Just so every, everyone agreed to this. Eichel agreed to it. His team agreed to it. Agent, everyone. Okay. That 12-week period ends May 30th. Soon. Yeah, so a couple weeks. Okay. Eichel is still feeling like, hey, this is still an issue. Nothing has gone away. I need this surgery. Mm-hmm. So, And that's why these notes are, are these. This is starting to make news now. Gotcha. So he has he has a medical team. And it is rumored to be full of like crazy, really good like surgeons and medical people. Like it's not like these are his personal guys. These are like practiced medical people in the states that he has gone out and saw it, and that doesn't they, they recommend because he. And it makes sense because even Elliot Friedman said like he's a he has fifty million dollars left on his contract. He's going to have an expensive yeah. medical team that can give him the best knowledge. So he wants cervical artificial disc replacement surgery. So basically, if you if you ever look at a spine, you know how there's like those bones that go down the neck. The herniated disc is the part in between the bones that okay. kind of stretches and deflects the bone. So what he wants to have done is he wants to have the herniated part removed and an artificial one put in. Wow. That's so it's, it's an intense surgery. And um, so I looked this, I looked it up to see what it was and to explain it. So um, advantages and normally what they would do before is they do a, some sort of fusion where they'd fuse it together. Right. And, but this is like a new type of procedure that a lot of people are having done now that is supposed to have a lot of benefits over getting fusion. So it gives you more natural neck motion. Good for a hockey player mm-hmm. reduces the risk for adjacent segments of the cervical spine to develop degenerative disc disease. That's another good reason to have that done. It eliminates potential uh, complications and issues associated with the need for a bone graft and spinal uh, instrumentation for a spinal fusion. And then allows quicker return to neck movement after surgery, which is also good for a hockey okay. player. The problem is the data collected so far has shown that it's relatively safe and effective for reducing neck and arm pain um, from a compressed n- nerve root or spinal cord. However, there is a lack of data on the success or failure of cervical ADR, which is short for it, in the long term, such as 15 or 20 years, which presents its own unknown risk. It must be taken into consideration when deciding on the surgery. Hmm. So 
The Buffalo Sabres do not support the surgery because of how new it is and because no one in the NHL has ever had it done, and they do not want to take the chance on it with a $50 million star player. I guess that's a reasonable and opinion. Eichel is frustrated because, as per the CBA, the team has the final say in what surgeries he can and cannot have. So if the team does not want him to have the surgery, they can prevent him from having it. That is a whole video in itself. That's that intense. Discuss. And he wants the surgery. So let's just say he had the surgery. If the recovery of the surgery is three months, he needs that surgery right now to be ready for training camp yeah. for next year. I guess. Yeah, that's true. So he's saying time is running out. This is what I want done. Let's get this going. And the team's like, no, we're not taking the chance because you'd be the first person to have this done. Wow. And if something goes wrong, then we have to pay you $50 million to never play hockey again. I wonder if he could consult with any other team doctors and get their opinion. I don't and even, th- I don't even think this is team doctors. I don't think it's the team doctors. It's, He's gone outside of the organization to find these big medical people, and they are the ones that are saying no, yes. But, yeah, but I wonder if you if you could somehow contact another team. We'll say it's the Nashville Predators. I think the only way that's happening is if it's a trade. Yeah, and I understand you're, you're both trading. Sides. Like when you go to trade a player, you have to hand over the medical info because they want to know what they're getting. Yep. And then the team would have to make a decision on do we want to take this risk of doing this surgery? Now, there's lots of people that have had. There's an MMA fighter that had it that said it changed his life. Um, there's a couple other people that had it that have come out and said it was good, but I mean, there's no guarantee. It's pretty intense surgery. They're literally yeah. taking something out of your neck and putting an artificial thing in. That's, that's scary. I, <laughs> yeah, okay. I, I understand both sides, but I still think that this is your star player. You're in, you'll li- almost certainly never have a player anytime soon. That's better than Jack Eichel. Elliot Friedman asked Kevin Adams, are you going to reconsider his request? And the answer was, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> oh, oh, snap. That, what kind of I don't want to talk about it is that? I don't know. Is that a, this is frustrating, I don't want to talk about it, and maybe we're going to have to, or this there, is creating a lot of headaches for me, and yeah. I just don't want to talk to anyone right now. There, there's already conversation that happened. There's already a decision that was made, but I don't want to talk about it kind of thing. <laughs> I don't know. And, I mean, look at the owners, the Pagulas. Oh, I can't say it. I know you can't. Pagu- Pagulas? Pagulas. Just say pa. Pa? Pagula. Ghoul. Pagulas. Pagulas. Don't go Pugula. Pug- Don't pug- 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 you're trying to. I think you were trying to put an I in there, which is what's throwing you off. Pug- you're going Pigula. Pigula. It's just Pagula. Okay. Pug- Terry Pagula. Pagula. Gotcha. So, do you think these owners are going to want to spend fifty million dollars on a player who's going through the yeah. surgery and may never play for them again? That's. Uh, it's so complicated. It's such a complicated situation. It's understandable from both sides. It is. His contract really makes it complicated. What's the right answer? I th- I let him do it. Yeah. I like I let him do it because it's about his happiness and <laughs> even in general, even if he's not playing hockey, if this surgery helps his quality of life, give him the surgery. Because if he's not playing hockey, guess what? He's doing the surgery. Do you think they want to move on from him? I think they have to at this point. Yeah. There's just so much there's so much drama. How Get hard much how hard can. is it gonna be to trade him no, I don't when think this so is hard. basically the, the I don't, carrot that goes with him? Like he's we'll trade him to you, but this is what he wants. There's going to be teams that definitely are not interested whatsoever. Totally. But but there's also only a limited market that's available to take him anyway. Yes, that's true. Exactly. And no deal is going to be worked out with Seattle. Do you think it lowers the trade value because he needs the surgery done? Yes, but not enough to be super concerned about it. Yeah. I would. You're going to have to pay for him. You're going to have to give up some some decent. Yeah. Current players or so the team prospects that, or picks. A or potential whatever. trade team would also be taking a huge risk as well. Yes. Because basically Buffalo would be unloading that risk but onto them. It's not gonna matter when you if you have an owner of another team, be like, do whatever you want. Yeah. yeah. If you need if we need to pay him fifty million dollars out or whatever or something like that, yeah, go for it. It's worth the risk. I want to win. I want to win the Stanley Cup. That sounds like a New York Rangers owner. That does sound like a New York Rangers owner. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of New York Rangers owners, nice oh, segue. Nice segue. Um so this is kind of old news now, but the podcast hasn't been on in so long that I just wanted to briefly talk about it. James Dolan's the owner of the Rangers. He cleaned house and the house is still being cleaned as we speak. It's, yeah, it's still dirty. Um, so he fired the president, John Davidson. He also uh, fired GM Jeff Gordon. And very unexpected. Everyone was surprised by that. Yeah. Like New York, I thought, took a step. They had like a plus 20 some goal differential and didn't make the playoffs. They're just in a bad division in terms of good teams in the division. I wonder if they actually had more points than Montreal. Like in a regular year, if it wasn't like the COVID layout, New York Rangers would be in the playoffs right now. Uh, Montreal had 59 points. Dallas had 60. Rangers had 60. 
So if this was regular Eastern Conference, they would have a wild card spot and Montreal wouldn't. Yeah. That's interesting. So it seems like a weird reason to fire people, right? And yeah. then they also released that scathing thing about the player Department of Player Safety. And supposedly these two guys tried to distance themselves from it. And then yeah. shortly after that happened, they were fired. And then they were told, oh, no, I didn't fire them over that. I fired them over performance. Like, I don't know. You, like, you literally told fans a couple years ago, we are stripping this thing down which and is building awesome, it back up, which is like crazy for a New York market because yeah. it's one of the big teams. Glad they did it. And they are literally moving in the right way. I, I thought that I thought it was shocking. I, I was I, it was very shocking. And. One guy, I forget, to, it was the Davidson or whatever. He's only been with the team two, like two years. years. The other guy since 2016 yep. or whatever. And then they just fired, what's his face? Yeah, so Chris Again. Jury was the associate GM. He comes in to take over both roles. Like, he's literally in charge of both things now. Yeah. He comes in and fires the coach. Yeah. Quinn, is that his name? Yep. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and then It's just odd. And then just a couple days ago, Brian Leach stepped down from his, I think it was a... Uh, some sort of advisory position in hockey okay. ops. And then they went to him and asked him, no, can you reconsider and stay? And he told them no. So oh. obviously he doesn't like what he's seeing. Wow. Like this is a veteran player of this organization. His number's hanging in the rafters. That is one of the biggest New York Rangers names in the history of the team. So that's... Brian Leach. Like, I'm kind of wondering what's going on here. Like, you're turning something into something that doesn't need to be I when wonder... your, your team is trending. Now, one pro thing... Hmm. They did interview Gerard Gallant they did. for the coach position they while he was on his did. way to go coach the team or the international team. Yeah. If he, if he becomes the coach of the Rangers who I like way, like because they made that change three years ago or whenever it was, whenever they announced they're going to do it, I'm like, wow, this team has balls. Yep. I like it. Yep. I'm going to start following this team a little bit more. Yep. And then they got some players coming on like Kako and Lafreniere yep. and Fox. Like I, there's such a f- awesome lineup. I love so many of the players. That's on the team. And then they're going to go out and potentially get my favorite coach yep. ever. Yeah. Gerard Gallant. Yep. Sign me up. Would you rather Gerard Gallant went there or to Seattle? Seattle. Yeah, me too. Seattle. Just because it's it's kind of an, an FU to Vegas in a way. <laughs> yeah. Like, okay. We're going to take this guy over. Like, Gerard Gallant has been short shafted so many times. He has. It's, he it's doesn't un- deserve it. I, I don't know, get it. It does not make sense. It just doesn't. I don't understand. It's like Florida lost their minds and then the owner in Vegas is, he's crazy. It would be different if he was like uh, terrible to the players or a rude guy. Players or something. love him and they perform well he's under him. He's the nicest coach in the world. <laughs> I know. Like what's going on? He's a PI guy, isn't he? Heck yeah. yeah. PI represents Shout Summerside. Out Shout out to Summerside. Um, the last note I have here is the players are expected to owe the owners over a billion dollars after this year is over. How? I that, don't know why. Because their salaries paid out compared to what was generated to the league is more than a billion dollars in difference. So but how do they collect that? They collect that by not raising the cap for that much longer until they make up for that. That's a lot of money. That's a... They lost $3.6 billion in ticket revenue be- not being able to have fans in the stands. Yikes. Yikes mode. Yeah. And that's the NHL lost that money. Yep. So some of that revenue is actually shared with the teams. Yep. So a lot of the teams I mean, are it's, struggling it's, it's, I mean, well. it's the teams that lost that money. Like each team all together oh, okay. lost 3.6. Like NHL itself. No. no. 3.6 collectively. Okay. Did not come in, but they still played out the paid out the player salary. So, uh, I think that you should have insurance. <laughs> that's intense. So yeah, say what's the cap? Like eighty one? What is it? Eighty? Uh, yeah, it's eighty something. Like so let's just say you have eighty something times thirty one teams. You pay all that out. The amount of money you made in on your side is over a billion dollar less than you paid out to the players. So the owners took a hit this year. Basically, is what this says. I think they said they were willing to do that, though, didn't they? Yeah. And some owners even paid the arena staff when they weren't even working. Yeah. Because it was the right thing to do. And then a lot of them kind of reneged on that really quick. They did. Douchebags. Is it Melnick that did that? I don't know. It's been, it's, it was just a long time ago now, so that, I don't know. That Melnick story is something I should have added to these. It's notes. not. Any, we'll have to do it next time. Yeah. What a what a donkey. <laughs> yeah. You're right. I kind of forgot about that. Sorry. Oh, Rain, uh, Islanders won. By the way. Oh, snap. Over time. Does yeah. that change your prediction? No, it doesn't change my prediction because it was a close game and it was decided in overtime exactly how I think the series is going to be decided, you know, in 
basically tied in a close game, game seven. So I'm not surprised. I'm surprised that the Islanders won game one, though. I, First Pittsburgh, two games in the playoffs have gone to overtime. That's intense. That's true. I didn't realize that. Yep. Interesting. The Vegas game's on right now. Vegas okay, we need to wrap this up then. So, yeah, let's wrap this up. I'm going to go home and watch that. Thanks for doing all these notes. I literally did not add a single sentence. Oh, you did make a spelling mistake at one point. I oh. erased that. That is my only contribution. Thank you. To these notes. So, yeah, thanks for doing that. I really appreciate it. Thanks. All you YouTube people, I hope you like our nice white shelves. There was nothing on them. I'll remember to bring some stuff to put <laughs> on the shelves. I hope it doesn't look as bad as it does, but I think it does. I think it's going to look pretty bad. You could, yeah. you could probably Photoshop some things on there. but Yeah. That's anyway. funny. Uh, thanks for doing these notes, Jason. I appreciate it. Thanks, guys, for listening. You guys are awesome. Thanks for your patience as well this season. Well, we deal with the COVID stuff here. I know restrictions here are a little bit more strict than where a lot of you guys live. And there was a point where Jason and I couldn't even see each other, let nope. alone film a podcast. A long point. Three, four months, maybe, something yep. like that. So well, we appreciate your patience. And thank you so much for sticking with us. And uh, hope, we hope that you're glad that it's back. We're glad that it's back. We're having some fun. And it's playoff time, which is the best time for the podcast because we get to talk so much fun hockey stuff. So if you're not subscribed to the YouTube channel, please subscribe to that. Subscribe to my channel over at Post Post Productions. Follow us on social media, on Twitter, on Instagram. All the links will be down below in the description. And if you are not, if you have not left us a review on iTunes for this podcast, we would love it if you could leave us a review. Go easy on us for this one. We'll do, we'll do better next time. Yes, please. All right. Have a great day, guys. Adios.